everybody. My name's Tim. Tim's Home Improvement. So, I'm here today to exchange a water heater out. Uh, I installed a 70 gallon walk-in tub in this house, which I'll show you later. And uh, the water capacity isn't big enough. This is 50 gallons, that's 85 gallons, and it's an electric one. So I have to put this one where this one is. And obviously you can see this is quite taller. This is 70 inches versus, you know, 40 or 36 inches, whatever this is. So I have to remove all of this here and uh, remove this pole. And uh, without redoing any of this plumbing, this is going to stay the same. But it's going to come to about right here when I get done with everything and I build a platform. So you're going to see this in stages, how it goes. And uh, you'll see me tearing it out, uh, building the platform, and uh, installing this, and then wiring it up, and uh, everything that it takes to do this. So I hope this is of interest to you, and uh, it's kind of fun. I, I enjoy what I do. I'm a handyman, and uh, I do everything. I do plumbing, I do electrical, I do bathrooms, showers, you name it. I do it all. And throughout any of these videos, you're going to see a variety of the things that I do. Uh, so, without uh, further ado, I'm going to get started. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to shut the unit off, which all the plumbing is good up here. Uh, the shutoff valve is all good. So, I'm going to reach up here and turn this lever, which hasn't been turned for a long time. And uh, this is what happens with old things, just so you know. Uh, now this valve is busted, the lever. <laughs> which you got to expect stuff like that, which is no surprise to me, which doesn't make any difference. It's all good. Uh, I just have to replace the valve now. So this is the piece that broke off right here. The stem broke off inside the ball valve. Now, this is a really lousy soldering job, but it looks like it held. But all this, you know, when I go to take this off, it's all got to get cleaned up. So it's three quarter inch. So I got a three quarter inch ball valve and that's what I'm gonna replace this with. So, there it is. So, I'm gonna get ready to solder and I'll show you where I'm at then. And uh, I can get a pair of pliers and shut this off and you know, do what I have to do. So, that being said, the rest of the job isn't gonna go like this. This is just a a freak thing that happens, so it's nothing to get upset about. It's nothing I hadn't seen before, so... Anyway, um... Well, that's not good. The whole valve has to be replaced now. This broke off inside there. This is 17 years old, by the way. This unit here. <clears throat> okay, so this is what it looks like when I took it off. I really can't show you how I took it off. I heated this up because I only got two hands and the tripod won't fit up here. But this is the valve and I heated it up and I twisted I twisted it off. I, I kept pressure on it while it was heated up so I kinda knew when it was getting ready to, to go so I didn't disturb this this fitting right here. I didn't want to disturb that so you don't want to get it too hot so it just busts up all these sweat joints here so I'm still gonna to have to fix this a little bit so I'm gonna heat this up and put flux on it and see if it'll take any more but anyway that's what it looks like cleaned up okay I'm just gonna show you a quick and quick soldering joint here Put a little bit on there to see it flow when it gets ready. It's ready. Yes. 
that side there. This I'm just going to do. Oh, I've got to shut this off. Okay, this I'm just going to do laying them down. Make sure you got enough flux on there. Keep this up. It's all in there. And that looks good. Okay, there's the new valve. It's all back in place. It works. That's off. When it goes up like that, that means it's off. And when it's going with the flow, that means it's on. So those are the joints. That's the new joint. This is the old one. I didn't disturb that one. I kept a rag on it to keep it cold so it wouldn't heat it up and break this. Break this, but this is all good. There's no water, you know. So all the joints are good. Okay, for this part of the job, I have to remove this pole. So what I'm going to do is I have a sawzall blade. This is a flush cut. So what it does is it's able to bend underneath here so it cuts this off even right at the ground level. So, putting this in, I make sure I have a fresh battery so I can just keep going with this and make sure this goes and like so. And so what's going to have to happen here is this is kind of like in the way. So, that's removable. That goes away. And so this, now you have a clean surface to go for. Alright, so this is a galvanized pipe, so this should come off pretty easy. So, here we go. out and uh, take this out so now that that's all done all right okay so I've hooked up my water hose to drain my tank get ready to do that this is still hot water uh, I've identified the circuit and the breaker I know which one this is so this is off so this won't come on as the water drains, it'll want to come on and it'll pop it and it'll blow up the stuff inside. So make sure this is all shut off and um, make sure your water is shut off up here too. This is the water valve. I'm shutting this off. And uh, basically, uh, this will be a good thing. So I'm going to open this up and the water is going to start flowing out. Now, without having this anything broken up here no air can get in so it won't drain fast so what I'm going to do is I'm going to unloose one of these here and the other one so it's going to let the air drain it out so as prepared as I am I need a wrench so I'll be right back and here it is alright so let's just uh, Take this one loose.
that's the pressure valve. But I'm going to show you down here. I'll pan down. So I cut this opening to see what's in here because I have to take this whole thing out and uh, build another platform because it's a lot higher. So I didn't want to move all this plumbing up, you know, set it on here. It's uh, it's got to support at least 900 pounds. 900 pounds for that new water heater as opposed to maybe you know 300 pounds for this so so uh, I'm moving on I'm going to take all this stuff apart and this is all hand tightened tightened and uh, these straps which are going to get replaced so all this stuff is just fairly easy to do Taking stuff apart is always easy. These straps are usually just hand tightened anyway, because they're just to stabilize. They're you know not really structural. So, all right. So I'm gonna let this drain, and then I'll be removing it in just a, probably about 15 minutes. So. Here's the top view of all the things disconnected and the lines here, inside here, and uh, basically, and this is the fitting that I replaced the other day, which is right here, uh, if you can see that okay. That's the valve that I put on. Okay. So you want to make sure that everything's shut off and you know before you start on doing your wires here, you know, because if there's anything loose, you know, just make it, make sure everything's shut off at the box because when you start to go grabbing things you don't wanna you know grab the wrong thing because it could be really bad, so you know, you got to touch both things, a ground or something, usually to get a good zap. But, you know, if you're not careful, you know, and things are still on, you can... Blah, 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 blah. I'm just kidding, folks. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's all off. Anyway, you should take a tester. And uh, I just take one of these guys. And this lets you know what's going on if it's, you know... And it's a good idea to test it on another wall, on a wall socket, before you uh, test it on anything else. So I'm going to go put it in a in a plug and make sure it's so. There's a beeper on here. Anyway, there it is. So it has a little doodad. So you can touch the wire, and if the wire is not, you know, doesn't give you a beep like you just heard in the background, then you're good. So anyway, so I'll disconnect all your stuff here. I personally, I always put the wire nut back on the the wire. I just don't let them dangle because it's just not a good idea to let them dangle. And it really doesn't matter which side you put it on because it's, you know, 440 is 440. Or 220, excuse me. So you get 120 here and 120 here. So just as long as the unit gets that, it's okay. So. 
red can go here or right here, it doesn't matter. So, anyway, cap those guys and just in case somebody, you know, turns the breaker back on or whatever. It just doesn't look very professional if you leave them, you know, just dangling like that. These you don't care about because that's just history. You're not going to worry about that anymore. So, all right. So that's good right there. Okay, so this is pretty much done. So I'm gonna unhook this and it's probably weighing about 125 pounds maybe right now, you know, being what it is, how old it is. So this is what I do because I work by myself usually. And I don't have anybody helping me, so I have something underneath of me. And I'm going to muscle this thing myself. So, um, basically, just the rule, my rule is, you know, if it starts to fall or anything falls, I let it fall. I don't try to catch it. So, basically, this is, if it works for me, it might work for you. So, just get everything out of the way as possible. And, just let it go and kind of test the water here because it's going to come down with this pan. So this might go good or it might not go good. So it is what it is, folks. I'm just going to take and cut along this side here, cut this down here, and then I'm going to cut on this plate here, I'm going to cut evenly. I'm going to leave this plate and use this as my other plate, and I'm going to build on this, because I have to come out to here with my new plate. So basically, I'm going to start with right here, and I'm going to shave off right at the 2x4 everything that has to come off. So. so basically this is going to chop chop the nails off right here so this edge comes off so I like to not you know break everything apart break everything apart like everybody else does they just take a hammer and demo it and they just go nuts on it uh, it's just a lot easier you're working in a garage and you don't want to get dust everywhere even though it is a garage this is a nicer garage now that I got this bottom part cut it's pretty loose so that will pull away so there's a 2x4 like right here up against the wall so I'm gonna go on the other side of it and cut it off here and then take this part off and then I'll deal with the 2x4 so. So the, there's the 2x4 right here. So it's inset in the wall, so it's kind of hard to get to. So basically, just so that's so this is probably you can, can pull this up, and that's that. So you don't have to take a hammer and start knocking everything around. So you kind of dissect it to see where you're at with it so it's not, you know, crazy thing. People like to go wild with this, man, and go, wow, oh, yeah, boom, 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 and they're hitting this and that and whatever. It's not me. So, all right, I'm going to hit the other side and do that and get that, and then we'll deal with this and... Uh, 
and we'll go on from there. So this is the part where it just lifts right up. So this is what you call the main manifold for this house. And uh, so I'm going to be covering this up with drywall, but they'll be able to get to it through the other side. So all this is coming out and get cleaned up and ready for the new one. All right, so I'm going to score my drywall. I have an opening in the back of that area there that has to be filled in. So that has to be fire rated, which is 5 8 drywall because it's a garage. Anything separating the house from the garage has to be 5 8 for a 20 minute uh, rating. So if there's a fire in here, it gives you 20 minutes. You can't have any holes or anything uh, in the wall. So it has to be 5 8 or else the insurance company will say, hey, it's not 5 8 so we're going to deny your claim. So you got to make sure stuff is to code. Uh, in your garage and you know electrical stuff because they'll look for any reason to jack you up with uh, you know not doing your claim so cut drywall is really easy you just take your measurement take a blade and score it right down the center there and uh, lift it up and this one's easy just me I just take a kick right there if that you can see that anyway run it down the back cut it there you go figure out which side is which I think this is my 24 and then it, I need to go 22 inches so I just take a, a mark right there and I'm and take a score. It doesn't have to be deep, it just has to cut the paper basically. And this is what it looks like from the back. If you can see that and then you then you got your piece. So so my finished piece should be 24 and a half by 22. There's 22. There's my 24 and a half. So, um, I'm trying to see where it says fire rated. It should say on the board, fire rated, fire code X. Let's see. Fire code X. Right there. But it's 5 eighths. Anything 5 eighths will do. Okay, quick lesson in drywall 101. Okay, this is what I'm patching up. I'm patching this up first because uh, the mud has to dry and then it has to be painted. But And then, then I build my platform. And when I'm done with my platform, I can set my thing and boom, I, I'm out of here today. So when you do your drywall, first thing you got to do is make sure everything's flush with this. So you take all these pieces and make sure it's all flush. Even though this is going to be hidden, you won't see it, I'll know it's there. But you should do everything like everybody's going to look at it. Never, never shortcut stuff because it just isn't worth it. It's called integrity. Alright, so this is 
I'll get in. That's the old tape. This is a clean out, so, you know. Because once you put the tape on, it's going to leave a bump. You want it as smooth as possible. All right. So, once again, this is the house's manifold. All these little, the, the, looks like it's been leaking. It does that over a year. This, this house is over 30 years old, so you're going to get that. And I don't, even, I don't even like to come close to touching this because this is a soldering nightmare if you're going to sweat this because these fittings, you know, each one heats up as you do this one, <clears throat> and it might break the sweat on this one and this one and this one. So you, you really got to be delicate, and that's why it looks so messy because the guy that put this together was, you know, having a hard time. And rightly so, you know, that's just the nature of them. So, anyway, that's just a plumbing thing. So, anyway, here's my board. Once again, fire rated. And that's my size right there. So, fits right in. This is pretty simple. That's there. That's that. So. So basically. Put all the screws in, and then we'll tape it, we'll tape it and mud it. Okay, we're ready to mud this thing. This is, uh, I use a, a fast set. This is a powder that you mix yourself. You can get it at any home improvement store. Um, it turns into mud, but it's 20 minutes. They have 5 minute, 20 minute, and 40 minutes. So it sets up real quick, so you don't have to wait around. So. So basically, take your tape, now that everything's done and the way you want it, hopefully. If it seems a little wet down here, it's because when you turn these things and they're not capped off up there, the, uh, the water, when they turn the hot water on in the house, it uh, puts water out here and it comes straight down. So you gotta seal it off so the water doesn't do that. So anyway, um, basically, so the tape goes right on the seam. Take your knife. You're going to have that happen. So sticky side. It's got stuff on there, so it, it'll stay. Once you put the mud on there, you're good to go. So. And, you know, these gloves don't help either, so Dexter dexterity is everything when you're doing this stuff. And these little threads don't help matters. So you got to cut those off, that just happens. Anyway, so, anyway, we'll do this side. Now the tape is for um, the seam, so the mud won't crack, and if there's movement, you know, it keeps everything together and it just ties everything, ties it all together. So you definitely want to tape stuff. You don't want to, over a seam, you never just want to put drywall mud over it, because it'll crack especially ceilings, anything like that. So, all right, so we're good there. 
So my mud is the way I like it. It's a little centered in peanut butter for me. And it's got a couple lumps in it, so you just want to kind of mix it up. They say let it stand for 10 minutes before you put it on and mix it up again. So uh, basically, I'm looking for my blades. I left my blades over there, but for right now, since I don't have to leave, you just take and put it on. Um, I'm of the mindset that I don't like to come back and sand. Most of my joints and stuff I do, I rarely sand them. Uh, it's the way that you put it on and uh, it's just the way you do it. So, But most of the time you're going to have to sand this stuff. So. Anyway, I'm putting this on right now, and then I'm going to go run over and get one of my, my knives so I can smooth it out. You want to make sure all the mud gets inside the crevices. And uh, like I said before, you don't want any openings. So, because fire inspector, if there's any kind of fire in this garage or anything like that, They'll deny your claim because it wasn't properly done. So, all you homeowners and anybody that's looking at this stuff, just because you don't do it doesn't mean that you don't know how it's done. So, if you know how it's done and somebody's doing this at your house and you see them doing stupid stuff, and you go, aren't you supposed to put tape there? And if they don't do that kind of stuff and they're doing shortcuts, you just say, okay, how much do I owe you? And kick them out if they have an attitude. So you gotta be really mindful. Most of this stuff that I'm doing for you guys right now is so you uh, know how it's done. A lot of you women out there will just not do it, but maybe you will. And more power to you because there's, all you women out there, you can do this just as good as I can. I'm sure of it. I'm gonna go run and get my blade. So I have, I have two sizes. You know, this size here, which is probably good, but this size will spread it all out. So, basically, I'll start from the bottom, work my way up, smooth it out, like so. And this way, too. So, once again, this isn't going to be out in the open where people can see it, so it doesn't matter. So I have to make it nice and make it work, so. More than likely, this will be all that I'll do for it. But that's pretty much it, you know. It's very simple. It's not a big deal, like most people make it, you know. It's, afraid to do certain things, but and this wall has got such a lousy texture on it, I don't care, so it's all good, so this is stuff you can't see in the camera, so it's just low in this corner, so I'm building it up. So, I'm going to let that sit and I'll probably give it one more coat over it and call it good. So, there's a piece over here that I'm going to fix for him just because I'm here with the mud and so I'm going to do it for him anyway because I do that kind of stuff. I don't know if you could see it, but it's that right there. So, I'm going to patch that up for him. So basically, um, I've laid out my floor, my pad here, 
and I'm just going to take a pencil. I got my wood cut, so these pieces are just sitting here, and uh, so is this one. So basically, I'm going to use this. I'm going to leave this in place because it's shot in with red uh, with a gun, and I'm going to shoot these into the cement so they're solid. So basically, um, that's what you're going to see me do next. I'm going to shoot these in, and then I'm going to build my platform over this. I'm just going to double this up this way and this way, and that's going to be my platform. That's going to be high enough for where I have to be. Oh, and by the way, this is uh, treated wood. You can't shoot into regular 2x4s. This has to be treated. Okay, this is the fun part of doing this. This is a uh, this is a ram set, and uh, this shoots uh, nails into concrete. These are 22 caliber rounds that uh, go inside here. It's supposed to fit nicely. These are a two and a half inch nails with washers on them. Basically, all you got to do is make sure everything's down tight, drop it down, look away, and fire in the hole. And that shoots it down into the cement, and that's nice and solid. So, pulls out that shell, take another one, and drop it in there. Safety first, you guys. You always got to make sure that there's nobody around. It's not going to freak anybody out. There's a homeowner inside the house. She's going to wonder what that is. Just She might come out the door and go, what is that? Okay, so there's the other one. I squared all this up, so there you go. So what I do is on these, um, I'll take another another shot and uh, put it down a little further because that sticks up. Or else I'll just pre-drill it depending upon what it is, but I'll go over the top like that. And that just kind of knocks it down and makes it flush. So, and you don't have to use a, a yellow. Yellow is probably about the most powerful one that you could use. But, uh, anyway, so. There you go. That way when you put your wood on here, you don't doesn't pop up on you. So that's it right there. Beautiful. That's what it's supposed to do. And this one here, I'm going to shove one down on this side because it's sticking up. So, here we go. Hopefully it won't pull up the other side. Oh, beautiful. Alright. Give me one more shell. Makes me want to go shooting. I love guns. I'm a gun owner. And then some. beautiful so that's it for that so that's what it looks like close up I'll get a little closer and they're flush see how they're flush into the wood there so I can lay my other wood on top of it and it's not gonna it'll just be flat 
So that's it. That's good. Good to go. Now I can start building. Okay, so I got, got all my stuff done. Time for some new knee pads. Got all my stuff done, got making sure it's all done and square and it's all nice and square and I'm happy with it. This piece here overlaps the other seam. So it, it becomes, it just makes it like one piece now. So um, they're not just, this piece here doesn't have a seam there. So you can see it's all solid there. So when I nail this in or I screw it in, it's all going to be one. So what I'm doing is uh, I got three inch screws which are probably too big. So inch and a half, inch and a half. So I say two and a half is going to do just fine. So I'm going to start right here because I know this is nice and square. And I'm going to put one right here. So we got one, two in this end, and then one in the middle, and then two down there. So. an impact gun. So since I'm standing here and making sure that's done, so I'm going to do Beautiful, huh? Goes together real nice. Real nice. So. Sure, this is straight, and it is. So two there, and left my bit there. So you guys get it. You don't need to watch me screw it up. Ha ha ha. Okay, so I'm gonna show you up close. This is. This piece right here, I had to put in and double stack that, so it's a seam. I'm using two pieces of wood to uh, for my top deck, so I had to have some place to screw into so it's even. Now this piece here is screwed into the bottom plate there, so it's just extra support. So give a span, you know, so it's the weights equally divided. But you know, all the weight's gonna be basically on the outside, but I just over, overdo it, which is fine. You can always overdo it, it doesn't hurt to do that. If people appreciate that. I do. If people, you know, go the extra little bit there. So I'm gonna show you basically uh, how to put the deck on. And I'm gonna put that on right now. So everything just get all the big pieces out you know sawdust is okay you know we just don't want big pieces and stuff inside the thing you know and here's something a little really kind of cute that I do um, not too many people do this but I'm gonna do it today I usually when I if I do any cement work or like a wall or close in uh, a chimney or something or fireplace thing you know I'll take some money and I'll put it in the bottom here, you know, so maybe whoever, if anything, if anybody ever, you know, tears this out, which I doubt it, I don't know. <laughs> it's going to be here the duration, but it, they'll find these, this change in here and they'll go, what the, I would, I'd love to find something hidden in the walls. I've done that. I found diamond rings in houses. Um, I, you, it's remarkable what you find. And I've even went to the people that have owned the house and said, hey, look, I found this in your house, this diamond ring. And uh, 
<laughs> the guy says, it's probably phony. And I said, well, what if it isn't? He says, just keep it anyway. And it, so two grand later, I, you know, so you never know. Anyway, so this being said, God's good. He's faithful, man. He, he meets your needs. He can bring it to you any way you need it. So, the most strangest way. So, basically, this is the wood right here for the deck. This stuff here is, in actuality, this is really good plywood. And I'm using this because I used it on something else that they had. This is three-quarter plywood. And uh, this is all, not no knots, this is oak. So that's why I'm using it. They had it here from some another project that I did at their house here, and they had it left over. So I'm using this instead of buying a sheet for 40 bucks. So anyway, uh, I'm going to put this one on first, and I'm making sure all the corners are good and everything lines up. It looks good. I like it. So. Whoops. That's on a screw. Move it over. There we go. That's that. Make sure this is nice. That's good. Alright. Beautiful. Okay. So I'm just putting in my four screws just to hold it down for right now. Just to give you an idea. Now this is where the seam is, right here, so I have something, a backer board to, to go into. So basically, this goes like so. start in the middle on this one. deck would hold probably about 2,000 pounds plus. Okay, so there's its finished product right there. I painted it and uh, so it looks real good. And it matches, so they should be real happy with that. And it's all done. Ready for the water heater. Next stop. So that's it right there. That's the big guy. I had to have somebody help me put it in. So basically now is uh, hooking it up. Now these straps have to be replaced. They were from the old straps. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start hooking this up. But there it is. I'll be right back. Okay, so I use on my threads, this stuff uh, really looks, works good, it's, uh, it's a paste that you put on, it's, it just helps. And these have gaskets uh, inside here, but it just helps if you seal it up and you can use Teflon tape, but this stuff doesn't dry, it just stays like this and it's really good. And this is called uh, pipe thread sealant. So put it anywhere that's getting screwed in.
both sides. Be generous, generous with it. So, I hope this, uh, this has been helpful to you. Um, I did a lot of things on this one normally. Uh, it would just be pretty cut and dry. It would be pretty easy. You just, you know, replace one thing for the other. But this was a little more complicated, so all of them are kind of different. So you just bend this pipe to, I like to use these copper ones because they don't, um, the braided lines, I've had some really bad experiences with them. They have a tendency to uh, break and rupture. So I don't use the braided lines anymore. I'll use these coppers. They're a lot more reliable and I'm all for reliable. Definitely reliable. So, alright, so I'm going to hook that up and then I'll get to the electrical and come back to y'all. Alright, so all the water's on. Uh, basically, I, I purged the line. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hook up the electrical and, uh, like I said, it doesn't matter. Unless the wires come out, one's black and one's red, it doesn't matter because they're both the same voltage. So, uh, these two. Wire nut goes on. Tight. And then till it starts twisting the wire. And basically you want to pull it and see if it comes apart or if it does anything like that. So not happening. So that's good and tight. Alright. Do the same for the other one. By the way, this is 10 gauge wire. This is 12 going into there. That's fine. Just as long as it has the 10 gauge feeding this, that's all that matters. That's what they recommend for a 30 amp circuit, 10 gauge wire. So, and this is the ground is in this conduit going to the box there. So it doesn't have a ground coming in here. It's a different type they have other grounds that have a wire here and through the through the line but this is grounded already this is grounded this is grounded and it goes into there and it's grounded in the box so there is a ground on that so basically what I like to do is uh, and most electricians um, don't usually do that but I'm just trying to find the end of this. I'll make my own. There it is. Alright. So, start at the bottom here, wind it around. There you go. That's just, you know, it's a water kind of a thing. You know, it just makes it watertight. Just in case. Just in case. Okay. And I like to keep them kind of separated from each other. 
and you know, kind of make it look nice and neat in there if you can. At least that's me. Okay, I'm gonna go turn that bad boy on and see what happens. All right, turn the breaker on. Should have power. Doing well. It's uh, doing good. All right. So, and I hear it humming inside, so that's a good sign. All right. Now I'm going to do these uh, earthquake straps and uh, that should finish it. Right on. Okay, so this is the final thing. I put three straps on this one because it's, you know, it's almost a thousand pounds. So out here in California, uh, you really have to kind of think earthquakes all the time kind of a thing. A little jolt's good. All this flexible stuff is all really good because it's it'll move, you know. It'll move with it and it won't fall over and so you just want to keep everything, you know, flexible. So I'm tightening it up and it's been heating up for the last uh, half an hour while I put these straps on. And uh, they don't have to be that tight. But I, uh, for this situation, I made them tight. And uh, you don't need three, but like I said, I, I put three on because I had an extra one from the old one. And uh, like I say, I overdo it a little bit sometimes. So, nothing wrong with that. So, beautiful. So, there you have it, everybody. This is, uh, this is an 85 gallon water heater. Uh, for a walk-in tub. It's a 70 gallon tub that I put in and uh, so this is the upgrade. Brand new uh, bottom piece here and all the new stuff there. And so I hope you like this and it was uh, informative to you and uh, if, uh, if you like it do the like thing on the on the YouTube channel and uh, subscribe and uh, God bless you guys